Uh, welcome. We're here today to announce five candidates for the United Australia Party sitting on the Gold Coast. Uh, I'd like to introduce Australia's next Prime Minister, the Federal Leader of the United Australia Party, Professor Clive Palmer. Thanks very much, Andrew. Thanks, everyone, for coming today. It's uh, only been a week, just over a week, where we launched the party. And it's interesting to think about what's happened in that time. The day after the United Australia Party was established, um, nine MSN ran a poll across this nation. 65,000 Australians responded, and 30% said they'd give us the first preference on their vote, which was indeed encouraging. Then the Gold Coast Bulletin here on the Gold Coast ran a, ran a poll and found that we had 40% support on the Gold Coast. Then last week, John Laws in uh, Sydney ran a poll online and 70% of the Australians who answered that call said that I should be Prime Minister. Yesterday, I think it was, or earlier this week, we endorsed um, William Schock as our candidate for Fisher and uh, the Sunshine Coast Daily ran a poll that showed Bill would get 45% of the first preference votes. The uh, Liberal Nationals were around 20, and so was the Labor Party, and Peter Slipper held the rest. So indeed, that's been an outstanding result. But why is it the case? Why is that sort of an extraordinary result? It's certainly got nothing to do with me. You've got to say to yourself, how long will it be? How long will it take that people of this nation will not be represented in Parliament? How long will we put up with having professional politicians represent us? Julia Gillard and Tony Abbott are one and the same. They're both influenced by lobbyists. The policies they say mean nothing. And uh, in the Liberal Party in particular, their vice presidents are paid lobbyists and so is their president. And one of the outstanding features of the United Australia Party is that we won't have any lobbyists in our operation. And how does a lobbyist work? It's a company which has a former minister from the Liberal Party and a former minister from the Labor Party. And it doesn't matter what the priority should be for you and your family. If I give them a million dollars, it doesn't matter who's in power, they'll get my policy result that I want. And that's the system that's been destroying this country and not putting back the priorities that should be there for the people of Australia. So today marks an important um, break from that sort of a policy with the United Australia Party. And I'm happy to be here on the Gold Coast to announce our five candidates. We'll be standing candidates in 150 seats across this Commonwealth. And after today's endorsements, we've already endorsed eight candidates. I'll be standing in the seat of Fisher, Bill Schock in, in um, sorry, the seat of Fairfax, Bill Schock in the seat of Fisher. And of course, Rob Messenger, he'll be standing in Hickler. So we've already got eight candidates on the road. And we'll, over the next uh, eight weeks, we'll announce the full team. I would uh, just like to say, I'd like to introduce to you the um, United uh, Australia's Party's candidate, endorsed candidate for the seat of Moncrief, Creef, uh, a guy that served the community for a long time, first as a lifesaver and then in council. He's well known for his stands here on the Gold Coast and we're very happy to have him as a candidate for the United Australia Party, Mr Grant Four. Albatross Avenue, went to Broadbeach State School. And like Clive, our Prime Minister-elect, I went to Aquinas College and finished my last years at Southport State High School. I've certainly done my apprenticeship over the last eight years uh, as a, in the grassroots of local government. 
uh, with a proud record delivering on the community's goals and strategically delivering for the areas I've served, not only for the area but also the whole city. A legacy I'm very proud of and something that will stand this test of time. As a member of the successful Commonwealth Games Committee, I want to commit the Federal Government to properly host and provide Australia's Commonwealth Games here on the Gold Coast, Queensland, the best infrastructure to benefit the wider community for the decades to come. Presently, I believe the state has promised $37 million, but they are asking $100 million from our ratepayers of the city. This is not good enough. To expect our ratepayers to fund the Games to such a higher level and the Federal Government needs to commit now, during the planning and development stages. I'll lobby all sides of politics to support Australia's Games here on the Gold Coast. Collectively, our current sitting members have not delivered for the Gold Coast and for the most people I speak to, they say the same. They're missing in action and when it comes to the Commonwealth Games and the tourist dollars. What we have really done for our city this time is right. It's right for change and you could deliver, if you can't deliver this in 12 years, you need to step aside and allow someone with fresh ideas who can deliver on the community's needs. My other wish, obviously with the, the lack of beds around Australia, the hospital beds, is to include the Southport Gold Coast Hospital, to retain it as a medical precinct with partial development in the smaller buildings. The two major parties have lost their ways with our resources, social infrastructure, refugees and boat people, creating wealth, small business and red tape, the carbon tax and party officials paying political lobbyists positions to name a few. The difference is clear on September 14th. You, when, we, when you want the way forward, we really need to protect jobs. The cost of living in this country, a country that is so rich in resources, we, should be in the current, we shouldn't be in this current position and inherited by both sides. And I thank you for coming this morning. I guess what Grant's saying really is if you're happy, if you're satisfied that everything that's being done now is enough, is sufficient for you and your family, then vote again for Tony Abbott and Julia Gillard. But if you think like I do that Australia is a great country, that we can unlock the wealth of this nation for our families and our children, that we can have a vision to go forward, you should give your support for the um, United Australia Party. And you know, she's a legend on the Gold Coast. She served the community well for many years. She's someone that I admire and respect. And her husband, Alex Douglas, took a courageous stand earlier this year and what's important in life is not how much money you've got or not how successful you've been, but the content of your character standing up for what's right. I'd like to announce our candidate for the federal seat of McPherson, Susie Douglas. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me much pleasure to stand here this morning as the endorsed candidate for the federal seat of McPherson, the seat I've lived in with my husband and family for the last 20 years. I joined the UAP because I was dissatisfied with the uh, way that my beloved former National Party had dissolved like a disparate. This is a very interesting time because people are embracing change and the duopoly of the two major parties, I believe, is coming to an end. If I am elected as a member for McPherson, I will lead the charge to correct the neglect that we have seen year in and year out by local representatives. I have every confidence that a government led by Clive Palmer will recognise that without upgrading Gold Coast infrastructure, this economy will remain at a stalemate. I'll be pushing for the extension of the light rail and heavy rail to the Coolangatta Airport. 
Macpherson is the gateway for millions of tourists and visitors each year who come interstate or internationally, and yet it is the most neglected in terms of public infrastructure. It was in my role as Chair of Economic Development for the City that I was able to get $365 million for Stage 1 of the light rail by a trip to Canberra. I was responsible for pushing forward with the high-speed underwater cable, which has now been pushed aside, but would have brought the likes of Apple and Google to the Gold Coast to set up. I know that I can make a difference in the seat of McPherson. As Clive Palmer said to me, he believes I am the key person for McPherson. Thank you. You know, my, uh, my family's had a strong commitment to Australia. I lost my great uncle in World War I. Five of our members served in World War II. My nephews have served in Vietnam and still recovering from it. And my other nephew, uh, squadron leader Martin Brewster, who will be standing in this election, led in defence teams up in East Timor. All of those people have done more than I could ever do to serve this country. And it's a good call to action for all of you people to consider, to consider that public service should be an honourable position. It shouldn't be something that you stay there for 30 years at, but you want to do something that's better for the community. And you know, it's crazy in the situation. We had Anzac Day recently. We honoured so many Australians that went forward for this country and the freedoms that we've got. They didn't go as members of the ALP. They didn't go as members of the Liberal Party. And uh, we need to stop the divisiveness in politics and call our politicians to do account for the community for what we can achieve. If someone's got a different political point of view, than me, it doesn't mean his children and him hasn't got the right for the uh, best sort of care and best sort of support in society. Political differences are not things to scorn people at, they're something to help us get to the right solution as a nation. And I know someone that, that believes that is, um, and she also is a great example to all of us uh, as we go forward, is our candidate we have for the seat of right, Angie Ison. Angie? Queensland and the community that I will be representing, the electorate of right. It is with great pleasure that I look forward to getting to know many of my constituents over the coming months and exploring the vast 7,500 kilometre electorate. I will be running for the federal seat of right with a goal of representing this wide rural area which boasts a wide array of businesses from agriculture to tourism. The moment I heard of the United Australia Party, I wanted to be on that journey with Mr Palmer, Queensland and the nation. I believe in uniting Australians and working towards a fairer government. I am ready to commence this journey from today. I will give my time and devotion to serve the people residing and working within the community of right. Australia needs more jobs. Young people need a path. Families need to come first for a change, and we need to make Australia a better country. Thank you. You know, I, uh, I've been a member of the Liberal Party and LNP, National Party, that side of politics for uh, up to 40 years. I was the former uh, official spokesman for the National Party. I was the former life member of the LNP. And uh, I know what it's all about, you know. It's not about the policies they announce. It's not about fulfilling the aspirations of all the people of Australia. So you'll see in the coming months there'll be repeated attacks on me as they continue to play the man and not the ball. But what this election will be about is about a battle of ideas. That's what's important. The ideas and the hopes that we should have an independent country, that people should do their best in public service for the nation they serve, and the most important thing about politics, really, is listening. It's not your point of view, 
is what other people think of you. And I know a great listener and someone that uh, I've had a lot to do with over the last couple of years. He's the founder of the Coomera Hockey Club. He's a great advocate for that. And uh, he's our endorsed candidate for the seat of Floyd, Mr. Bayer Brewster. of Australians were born in another land, came to Australia with the promise of hope to build their lives with their families. You know it's a big commitment to leave all you've got, to go to a new place where sometimes you might not understand the customs or the language or what happens. And our country has been a lot richer for that. We've had great diversity, but great different ideas which we've all want, learned from. The, our candidate for the seat of Fadden is such a person. When he left Ireland many years ago, to come to Australia with his family, and he didn't know what his future hold, held. He went on in his life here, eventually in politics, he became the senior vice president of the Liberal Party of Australia. He resigned from that position. Of course, I think as he will tell you, he wasn't very happy that the people of this country weren't being represented. I'd like to introduce the, our candidate for the seat of Fadden, Mr. Jim McNally. Thanks very much. seat because Clive and I go back a long way, in fact when he was about 19 years of age. A person who had nothing, not two cents to rub together, and today he is the man who we believe will become the Prime Minister of Australia. A person that has built his career on a vision for this country so that he could make this the lucky country again. One of the reasons my family came to this country was it was the lucky country for everyone. And we have an obligation to bring it back to that. It's not there anymore. There are too many people out of work. There are too many things not getting done in this area. We have people in office that are standing there waiting for things to happen. Whereas we can come with the United Australia Party and make it happen. And that's what our intention is. And that's what we are going to do. We are looking at bringing the light rail from the university back up to Helensvale so that it can make a difference on the Gold Coast public transport system. We're also looking at the environment for the Broadwater and the marine industry. And should we be successful in obtaining government at the next election, these are the things that we're looking at. These are the things that we want to do. These are the things that need to be done to keep this country lucky again so that our kids and their kids in the future will have a country that they're proud of and we're giving them and you the option to go ahead with that. Thank you. Just before we take questions, I just want to make the point that Australia is a democracy, that we're offering ourselves for service of the community and there shouldn't be anything, anything wrong with that. So many people and so many people in the press think that we shouldn't do that, that people shouldn't have the choice. 
But it's far more important for Australians that they have a choice to decide who should be their government. And that's why we're standing, because we want to give people a choice. We don't think there's any choice there at the moment. So perhaps we can open for questions of me or of any of the candidates. Does anyone have any questions there? Jim Wilson, my name is Ethan Moore on the Gold Coast. I have a question for Grant Moore and perhaps Susie Douglas. I'd also be able to answer it. It's uh, based upon the fact that our press and our representatives here have given no coverage to this whatsoever. It relates to the impact of increased dredging in the broad water for a cruise ship terminal on the Rovetla Falls, most importantly in your area, of people living on canals and on rivers. And I'm just wondering what your position is on that, please, Grant. Well, I don't think we can take questions on local government issues because this is not a local government election. So it's really any members of the press that have got a question this time we can probably go into that. So has anyone from the press has moved? I, I would like to know where the party has set the cruise ship terminal. I know it's a local government issue, but it has to be passed on the state and then by the federal government. So where does your party stand on the cruise Well, basically, we're standing in a federal election and our policies are the same as the Liberal National Party policies, except for five areas, and I think we, we can go into that. We're standing for a federal election. We think there should be more investment in the Gold Coast and the Gold Coast should be a higher priority, not just for the cruise ship terminal, so to speak, but for the whole community. Tourism in this country has supported the nation for a long time. We haven't had enough investment. We haven't had enough activity. We can see the Australian dollar is at $1.03 at the moment, but our economy is still a long way behind. So we think the federal government needs to invest not in any one particular project, but a whole lot. And, to, and take the initiative and provide some leadership. We do, and uh, just speaking very broadly at the moment, uh, we see a situation where um, our resources in Queensland and, and in Western Australia are mainly exported to countries like Japan. Japan's become the third biggest in the economy. We export, say, ores and various commodities for about $40. They process it in Japan and sell it in the world market for something like $20,000. So we want more revenue and more jobs for the country. We need to do more processing and manufacturing here. One of our main policies is to take some of our resources to the states where there isn't a manufacturing industry, where there's large unemployment, like in the Latrobe Valley in Victoria, where there's 25% unemployed people, and to establish downstream processing for the Commonwealth to play a key role in doing that, <coughs> providing jobs and higher value exports. Now, people can say we can't compete with the Japanese, but how can it be that the Japanese have a higher wage than we do, a higher living standard than we do, and how can it be that they have the higher energy and a tyranny of distance? So we're saying all those things happen because we don't have leadership, that people don't really care in Canberra about the benefits our, our people only care about being re-elected. I can say to everybody here that if I'm elected Prime Minister, I won't earn as much as I do now, so I'm giving up something to do it. I don't think that's the case of the majority of them. Yeah. Well, I think the Commonwealth Games is something that's for all of Australia. It's not just for the Gold Coast. It's something that all of Australia should benefit by, and the tourist industry should benefit by, not just in the Gold Coast either. When people come here, uh, they've got opportunities to go to places like the Barrier Reef, Sydney, the Murray Valley, the Alton River Valley in Victoria, the Barossa Valley in South Australia. They can even visit Western Australia and some of the outback. So it's a whole... It's a whole national endeavour, and the Commonwealth should be playing a key role. Like uh, our candidate said, it's not reasonable to expect ratepayers in the Gold Coast to pick up the bill for the folly of Anna, Anna Bly. It should be something that the Commonwealth Government supports. I know when we did World Expo, that was the case. There was Commonwealth funding for World Expo. It was a great success. Well, it should be. There's $100 million being asked for for the ratepayers of the Gold Coast, and that money should come from the federal government because it's something for all Australians. It's just wrong that it's, it's coming from the Gold Coast. Well, I'll be here. I was at the uh, uh, a la carte on the park a week or so ago, and that was pretty good. And um, of course, the Gold Coast is uh, where I went to school. The Gold Coast is where I've got a home as well. And, uh, you know, it's, it means a lot to me. I, I went to Southport State High School, the best school on the Gold Coast, I would say. But, and, uh, you know, probably everyone won't agree with me, but I, I certainly enjoyed it, right? I played football with the, with the mighty Tigers, the Southport Tigers. They're a wonderful team. They're here today. Some of the Tigers, I've, uh, I'm, I'm a, a patron of the Tigers. and proud to be one, you know. I was a lifesaver at the uh, Greenmount. They awarded me my bronze medal after 40 years um, the other day. So, you know. I'm really committed to this place.
and that's where we are now. Uh, you did work at university research I think that's true, and, and that happened uh, before we announced our party. The next sort of research will say they switched on, but not on to the other two, on to us. So it really just says that research that we need to make a difference, and that's widely recognised. I must say that I was surprised with the response we're getting. We had 300,000 hits on our website. Now that's a lot of people right across the country. And uh, as far as the press about having 500 members, we've got plenty more than 500,000 of members even in, even in a week that are registered that want to, have applied for membership to join the party. As far as 150 candidates go, we've got over 600 people across this nation and seeking our endorsement. And we're endorsing five candidates here today. And there'll be more candidates endorsed in Brisbane tomorrow. Uh, so this is not going to stop, Mr Abbott and Madam Gillard. We'll be going on. We'll have a full team of candidates. We'll be standing in every state and every Senate, and we want to change the government of the country. Well, it's, uh, we've applied for state registration at the moment. Federal registration is just a, another barrier that Gillard and Abbott have put there to stop people getting through. But it won't affect us. You know, in, 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 All you really get out of uh, federal registration is to have your party name on the ballot paper. That's it. You can still stand as a party if you're not registered or not. So it's just all rubbish. And if anything happened we weren't registered, I'd be writing a letter to every Australian and telling them who to vote for their electorate, you know. Well, it, it's up to the uh, uh, Electoral Commission. We put our application in and it's up to them to decide. No, it'll, it'll go in before the 13th, you know. Well, I think so. Where are you from? Channel 7. No, we should get someone from the board to run a poll and see what happens. You know? They did that. What did it say? Did it say we'd win any seats? No. I think we'll win five seats on the Gold Coast. I think we'll win two on the Sunshine Coast. I think we'll win um, some con you know, very conservative rural seats. I think I can think we could probably win at least 10 to 15 seats in Queensland. That's what I think. You know? I mean, you've got to remember that we only, only have to finish second if we get preferences from the other parties to win. And I think we'll finish first based on the polls that are being done. So, you know, I think it's a, it's a real challenge to these, these parties and it's about time, you know. It's too long that we've been waiting. You know, in, in, in New South Wales, I guess in Queensland too, we're paying six to $10,000 for electricity, you know. And that's, that's, a, that's a bomb. And our, our policy is to abolish the carbon tax, not from when we were elected, from when it was introduced. So people can expect under a United you know, Australia Party government to get refunds of their electricity that they're paying this year. Substantial refunds, thousands of dollars. Because if a tax is wrong, it's always wrong. I'm sick of watching politicians get elected as on, on a policy and then modifying it after they're elected. They're saying we haven't got enough money. Our debt is the lowest in the OECD in, in per capita, much less than the United States and Europe. But we told all this rubbish about balancing the budget. It's just an excuse for not providing the community with some services. The cost of a public servant in Canberra today is $165,000 with all these on costs. The cost of the average Australian worker is $65,000. I think that's wrong. I think it's got to be changed. It's got to be a fairer country and a fairer distribution. Any more? Well, it just sounds about opportunity. People need to be rewarded for effort. That's what it boils down to. And we have to look at things on an equitable basis as a government, a government's not there to run a business, a government's there to provide a service, create an environment, create an opportunity. And we need to get our cake and make it bigger and bigger so we can provide more wealth for the country and more revenue for the government and more services for the community. If you look at you know, value adding to your resources, you look at the difference between all at $40 and final metal at $20,000, you talk about your balance of payments, increasing the exports, creating the wealth, that's what we need to do. And that's what I know how to do. That's what I've done for myself. Right? So, um, you do think that the, the qualifications of Tony Abbott or Julia Gillard are such that they qualify them to run a $1.5 trillion economy? When they've looked at a balance sheet in their work life, as, as, as it had as many zeros as the ones that I've looked at. Do they really know how to read it? Do they really know what's happening? Of course they don't. Right? That's what we've got it. So they couldn't even run a tuck shop, as I've said. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, it's time we did something because it's so important. It's important to our families. It's important to everyone that lives here. On the Sunshine Coast, where well, I'll be standing at Fairfax, we've seen families broke up because, you know, children have had to go away to Sydney and Melbourne for jobs. 
has been lack of education and families have got destroyed. So what I'm focusing on today is about the community. It doesn't matter whether you're a Liberal voter or a Labor voter or you're left or you're right. As an Australian, the government should be worried about serving you. It's not there to purge you. And what happens in this country is that the Labor Party's in power for so many years and they purge the people that are of a Liberal view. The Liberals get into power and they doubly purge the Labor Party and it goes on and on. But you know, that we've got to put an end to it at some stage. We've got to stand up as Australians and say that it, it, we can do better. And you know, if you have a look at the the, um, the, the fun everyone takes at me, that plays at me, I don't mind that. But if you have a look at it, they don't take it seriously what we're saying. Should we be dominated so we can't stand in our democracy for something we believe in? Is that a reasonable proposition? Anyway, any more questions there? Yeah. Well, at this stage, our policy is the same as the Liberal and the Labor Party, is that they don't discuss preferences until after the ballots close and know who the candidates are. To do so would be, would be crazy. Um, but I don't think we'll need preferences in some seats. I think we can win in the first vote. You know, if you have a look at the Fasita Fisher, we're up at about 45, 46% in the Sunshine Coast poll. And you can imagine how many Labor apparatchiks and Liberal apparatchiks are on the little clicker. You know, they still couldn't uh, defeat us. So I think our real vote up there is about 55%. I fully expect Bill Schock to be declared the member for Fisher without ever having to go to preferences. And I think the same is true here on the Gold Coast. Yeah. Well, I don't want to make all the news in one day. <laughs> and this is a this is a federal matter. That, that that issue. We're having a press conference at two o'clock in Brisbane uh, next Tuesday, when we'll discuss some of those things at a state level, and Alex will be there to discuss it. Right. But um, you know, I think things will change in the state too. You know, it's very disappointing. Uh, to see what's happened in, the, in Queensland, where so many assets have been privatised, where they're selling off our schools and they're doing things like that. Now, why are they doing it? They're doing it because their mates who are in lobbyist companies get a good commission when you sell a school and they're selling it to their clients. That's who they're doing it and that's why they do it. And you know, you've got situations where you've got lobbyists going, you know, leaving school, going to university, becoming a staffer in a minister's office then becoming a lobbyist, then employing the minister he used to work for, and then them lobbying their mates to do some deal and sell some public asset. And that's what's going on now. The, the Premier said that they won't sell off our assets, well they are selling off our assets. Our schools are being sold, our hospitals are on the market. You can buy anything in Queensland's for sale, as long as you've got the right lobbyist. But I won't pay a million dollars to a lobbyist to buy an asset, because I think it's immoral. And that's why the United Australian Party thinks it is too. We think we should serve the people. And I just say that if I am elected Prime Minister, it'll only be for one term. Because I, I don't believe that we should have perennial politicians. I think there are people that can obviously do a better job than I can. But at a critical moment at this time, it needs someone that's had my experience to turn the country around and make the changes that need to happen. And then we need to inject in this whole country a spirit of service for all Australians to participate. It doesn't matter what your political persuasion is, it doesn't matter what your experience is, the, 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 the nation will be richer if you're welcomed into participating and we can achieve a lot more as a country. Thanks very much. You are.